Hello everyone, it is Andrew from IGB here, and we spent a couple days going through and looking what is new in iOS 11 Beta 3 other than the myriad of bug fixes. One of the first things for me I noticed, this is a lot less stable than the last two. I have had my phone crash many, many times, but there is a lot of good things to see and that's what we're going to check out. First up on the iPad, going into the app switcher, no longer do you have to long press and then tap on the X in the corner to force quit apps. You can simply swipe up, even do multiple time if you'd like to. Personally, I like the little X in the corner, but I know a lot of people didn't, so that should be a welcome change. Notifications and widgets take up a little bit more space. They're a little bit wider on the larger iPads now. Jumping into the Files application, we have a new option for OS X Server. If we turn that on, if we hit Edit Mode, and we can turn that on and off. Right now, it doesn't really do anything, but obviously that'll be tied into OS X Server in the future. We also have some new changes to the app switcher. So if I pull up the dock inside of an application and I try to go ahead and pull out uh, the files app, it'll see this animation and you can see the edges move in just a slight bit as we're going to pull that up. Now let's go ahead and jump back over to the iPhone side of things and see everything new there. A lot of it's going to apply, but it'll make more sense on the iPhone. And we have syncing of messages, and now it'll tell you how many items are left to sync before it finishes. So I can see, okay, I have 40 items that are syncing now with iCloud. This is kind of a neat one. You can now drag and drop inside of the Messages app. I can hold onto any message or image, and I can drag it around, and I can even drop it right here into the text bubble and send it again. Now, I know it would not necessarily make sense to drag a text chat from one person into the same one, but I can hold on to it with my other hand or another finger, tap the back button, go into here, and I could go ahead and maybe forward this offer for Bed Bath & Beyond and go ahead and send that over to someone else. The notification center has been changed a little bit. Now when you do the cover, you pull it down from the top when you're inside of your phone, it'll no longer just show you your last couple messages or your last couple notifications. It'll show them all without you having to swipe up. On the home screen, it'll still show that until you swipe up, but when you pull down and do the cover effect, it'll do that there. Spotlight now will show search results right below the search field, which makes a lot of sense unless you're looking for an app which moves down a little bit if there's actual search results to display. Inside of the music application, there's been some small tweaks, notably the lyrics. The font size is now decreased from what it was in the past, making it a little bit more fit in there and look a little bit nicer. But since we're in the music app, we can also show off another small change that has happened, which is for Smart Invert, which is more or less the dark mode that a lot of people have been trying out. And it's been improved here in the beta 3, notably that the album artwork is no longer inverted. That was kind of accidentally being inverted in the past. Now it looks really nice, and this is getting closer and closer to a usable dark mode for many people. Inside of the weather application, the glyphs have been updated slightly, just small design tweaks there. The Health app got some new features inside of iOS 11, notably they can now sync into the cloud, and there's a new cover splash screen that you can see when you launch the Health app, letting you know of those new features. More languages have been added to Siri Translate, so I can ask Siri how to bring me a beer in German, and she can not only show it to me, but she can speak it to me as well. It'll also work for French, Italian, and other languages. This is definitely a bug fix, but you are now able to actually drag icons into a folder that is on your dock. So that's a small change, but it was not working in past builds that's been cleared up. If you ever peek into a URL, it'll now just display the full domain there at the top. So it'll just show the idownloadblog.com instead of that full URL. And then of course you can pop into it. More TV providers have been added inside of the settings app, and if you have that are not set up for single sign-on, it'll still remember your stuff into iCloud Keychain and try to automatically log you into the apps that use that. You can see there's a full list here. Unfortunately, many of them do not work with single sign-on yet, but there are a lot here and you can go ahead and sign into them. There is a huge list of things that have changed inside a control center, most of them pretty small. Now when you go ahead and toggle off Wi-Fi, you'll see at the top, it disconnected me from my current network. There's a small message at the top of the screen, and you can see it also disabled auto join. So it temporarily disables your Wi Fi and turns off auto join. And similar things happen for the Bluetooth toggle as well. We get some more quick access to things. So when we swipe into Notification Center, I can actually just tap on the now playing widget and it'll jump me to whatever 
app is currently playing. In this case, the music app was the last to actually playing anything. And similar things work for the Apple TV remote. I can just tap on that. No longer do I have to 3D touch to jump into the remote itself. If I go ahead and want to turn on the flashlight, I no longer have to actually press on it and then lift up my finger and change it. I can actually in one swoop just press on it, 3D touch onto it, pull up, change the brightness, and then go back down. I can do a similar effect with the actual uh, timer. So I can just 3D touch it, go up, change it without ever having to take my finger off of the screen. Some icons got new little color tints as well. The flashlight turns blue. If I have a timer going, it also turns blue. And the low power icon will get a nice shade of yellow when it is activated. Then we have the new screen recording button. If you jump into there, you will see we have a new option for start broadcast. Right now in this beta, it does absolutely nothing. It'll maybe save a uh, screen recording to your camera roll, but for me, it doesn't even do anything when I press onto it. Speculate wildly down below in the comments to see what it actually does in the future. We can also actually see when we do a screen recording, the bar at the top, the now recording bar, is much more smaller and less pronounced than it was in the past, which is definitely a welcome change. While beta 3 has not been very stable for me, it is a slow progress toward the march of releasing iOS 11 this fall. Let us know what you think of all these changes, and of course, this is a non-comprehensive list, so if you found something that we've missed out, definitely let us know in the comments. We don't have time for everything, like the fact that the backgrounds are less blurry for the app switcher, so you can now get direction while do not disturb while driving is active, and over apps over 100 megabytes will no longer download on cellular if you have that option turned off. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Till next time, this is Andrew for iDownloadBlog.